Welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, guys, I've been busy today. I wish I would have been able to get this uh, video out in the morning for you guys, but I've just had a bunch of stuff to do today. But guys, I needed to get a video out today because I know yesterday and really the entire weekend, honestly, probably the whole week going back seven or eight days, have just been atrocious. Uh, we've we've just been seeing red after red after red, and culminating in yesterday Sunday. You know, one of the worst uh, moves we've we've had in a while. But um, so I did want to get on and kind of share my input, uh, share a few things that I I know is are going on yesterday i did a video um kind of touching on you know the factors that have been putting uh bitcoin in into the red including you know the war in the middle east uh we've got um you know possible recession talks uh mount gox we have all these things that have kind of um been been a drain on Bitcoin over the last week. And I kind of did a video on that yesterday. However, there is one thing that presented itself yesterday that really I I, I knew about it, but I didn't know all of the inner workings, the mechanics of the entire thing. So I want to share that with you guys and just a few other insights and some things that that other people are are kind of looking at and going into. So um, make sure you stick around because, guys, I'm going to end this video with a clip from Raul Pal uh, from his video that he put out this morning. So stick around. I think he'll he'll also have some insight for you. Um, but as always guys before we get into the video let's jump over here guys this is the animal sanctuary that i am uh kind of spotlighting this month this entire month and that is the zend Far farm animal sanctuary you can go over you can become a sponsor donate a couple dollars for uh through paypal with your debit or credit card and really, really help out these needy animals. So, guys, if you haven't done that that yet, please go over. I know it's a big ask, especially when the markets are so deep in the red. However, guys, this isn't something like your morning Starbucks that you can just cut out. Like, these animals have to be taken care of despite what the markets are doing. So... If you can find it in your heart to give a few dollars to these guys, it's always appreciated on my part. Um, but yeah, guys, I do have their link uh, to to their page here in the description. They also have uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a YouTube, I believe. So um, go over, check them out. If you have something to, to spare, please consider donating to these guys. Okay. So let's get into it. Um, the first thing I want to show you guys um, is I want to show you the charts. So let's jump over uh, to the charts. We're going to bring this up here. Okay, so guys, I've been talking even before what the having about this boring sideways to downish uh, time that we have after around and after the having. So guys, you can see here the having is in green. This green line is the having. Um, and I so we we have right here at this green line, but I want to I want to go back. We're going to we're going to measure from this top here all the way down to the bottom where where this hit which was right there and we are looking at a 39.5% drop there now that can't be right 
That can't be right. Uh, like 30, 39% after the having. Oh, hang on, guys. Hang on. This is the 2017 model. And we went all the way up after that. So, guys, yes, we do have, like I've been saying, this, this having. It does eventually kick in and we see these magnificent, crazy gains off, off that supply crunch. But there is a time during and after that having where we do trend sideways and downwards. Um, so let's, let's jump forward, guys. I can't even zoom out enough with like keeping that in contest look look how small that looks already and we're not even to the 2020 having <laughs> like these are the these are the kind of gains that bitcoin gets you um but yeah let's zoom in to where we're at now so this is basically that same time frame guys and this one looks even tamer, you know, but if we go from, from our high here, uh, let's see, we go from our high there to where we're at. Um, actually that's a super wick down, but we'll just go down to where we did hit, which was 49,000 or so. Um, that is a 33.25%. Uh, move. So we are finally, guys, in that 30% correction that I've said time and time again is normal. We're finally into that territory. And to that point, I want to jump over to a um, to a Twitter post from, uh, excuse me, um, from Peter Brandt. And so Peter Brandt says, please note that Bitcoin decline since having is now similar to that of the 2015 to 2017 having bull market cycle. Um, and as you guys can see, um, I didn't want to do that. As you can see, we, we had about 27% decline post having now when i uh, measured that on trade view on the charts i was actually going from that high before the the uh the having but this is just a chart showing post decline the having um and that decline that we have afterwards 2017 we saw negative 27 guys even now to date, we are only in that 26%. So it's not worse than the 2017, but it is very comparable. And guys, it's been said over and over this time that we are mimicking that 2017 cycle uh, a lot closer than we, we are uh, mimicking the 2020 cycle, which is a good thing, actually, because we... You know, in 2020, we did have a very, um, I would say, stunted bull market because of all the fraud that was going on with FTX and all of the things going on with the China ban. Um, so if we are truly mimicking the 2017 cycle guys there is nothing but tailwinds for us and if you look at it guys this it, there's a reason i i am always on this channel stressing that you guys get a plan get a plan know about this volatility prepare yourselves so when we do go into these volatile times you are not being shaken out and acting emotionally on, on the price of Bitcoin. Um, and really, when you look at Bitcoin, you know, just 
just zoomed in on Bitcoin, not anything macro or anything. Bitcoin has so many tailwinds going for it right now. We've got, you know, politics that are shifting faster than I would have ever imagined in favor of, of Bitcoin. Um, we've got institutional growth, guys. We have just, uh, I believe last week, Merrill Lynch started saying that their, their advisors could start recommending the uh, or talking about the ETFs, the Bitcoin ETFs. And those wirehouses, guys, we've been talking about the wirehouses like Merrill Lynch, uh, UBS, um, all of these major wirehouses that that have not turned on yet. We've been talking about this almost since uh, day one on uh, with the ETFs. And we thought this would kind of, these would turn on a lot quicker um, because they were seemingly kind of in a in a race to do so against each other. You know, UBS and Merrill Lynch were were really kind of seemingly com, uh, competing to be the first ones to allow trading of uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. But guys, Merrill Lynch just started moving really definitively last week on this. And I think, you know, from everybody that I've I've seen videos on uh, Matt Hogan and the like. These these wirehouses are very, very close to turning on and that will bring in um, a lot, a lot of institutional and just a bigger wave of inflows into those Bitcoin ETFs. So guys, we've got tailwinds politically. We've got tailwinds as far as the ETFs go. Nothing has changed about Bitcoin. Yes, a lot of people and a lot of indicators are failing uh, to, to be able to predict what Bitcoin's doing lately. You know, I saw a trader uh, today who he put out a video, I don't know, four or five or six days ago and said, uh, undeniably, uh, August is going to be a ripper of a month. We're going to all time highs and beyond. And just five, five days later, now he's saying he's, he's completely out of cryptocurrency. He, you know, he, all of these indicators are seemingly broken and he's out. He doesn't see any point in being in the market. And I, you know, honestly, guys, I, I said it when it happened, um, when we had these ETFs go live, I, I've said more than once that this is not the same market. You know, these indicators that you've relied on for trading, if you are trading Bitcoin right now, it's going to be a risky thing. Uh, because these indicators, we've opened up an entirely different market to Bitcoin. And so these indicators are not working because it's not the same market anymore. Um, so I don't know, guys, uh, there, you know, there's there's a lot of FUD. A lot of people are are getting shaken out right now, probably worse than we've seen this bull market, to be honest. Um, you know, and and a lot of that has to do with the fact that we may be heading towards a recession. I am still not so sure about that. But. You know. This, you know, stock markets are are tanking, guys. So one reason we saw Bitcoin make such a large move yesterday was because, um, well, we've got to get into the thing that I'd, I'd said that that happened several months ago. I knew about, but I didn't know all about the mechanics. So let's get into that. What is that? That is the fact that the Japan, uh, J Japanese uh, uh, yen is their currency. The yen three months ago, I think it was, it was right around 
not not this this very last FOMC meeting, not the month before, like three FOMC meetings before, the Japanese yen just started taking a nosedive against the dollar. And a lot of economists were worried back then that um that okay the the yen is crashing crashing japan's going to have to do something we know that they have a lot of uh us treasuries so do they sell their treasuries to kind of um stimulate their own system and bring their yen back up so a lot of people were worried about that because if if Japan starts unloading U.S. treasuries, it's basically another force on the dollar, um, which could lead to higher inflation eventually. So uh, a lot of people were kind of pointing at that. But guys, what they did, Japan, um, I think it was... I don't think it was last week. I think it may have been the week before last. Japan has been completely opposite of everyone else as far as uh, monetary policy, guys. While, while the US and the U EU and everybody else has hiked rates, rates since 2022, Japan has been negative or zero. So they have continued to have a 0% like very eased monetary system over there. And what they did two weeks ago was they, they started raising rates. So Japan raised their rates like 0.25% two weeks ago. And it, it was very odd because at a time where every other central bank is looking at easing and lowering rates, Japan made the opposite move. Now, why that's important, guys, is there's a thing. Now, this is what I didn't really understand, but there is a thing called a carry trade. And what that uh, basically implies, if I, if I have it right, is that... If, if you're going to borrow money, okay, and you look at the U.S. system where you can borrow money at, uh, you know, the Fed rate is 5.5%, or you can go into the yen and you can get a, a loan rate at those 0% rates that, that the uh, yen has. So people are, are going into the yen and taking loans on that yen uh, for a better rate in Japan. And what happened when they hiked their rates that 0.25%, you know, not only are you leveraged, but now the, uh, the yen starts gaining steam against the dollar and what what ultimately happened was i mean it, it crashed their stock market like their stock stock market is what started crashing yesterday for us in in america but it was monday for uh japan and their stock market absolutely tanked and that's when we saw bitcoin tanking so markets that that's the thing guys is on the weekends when things are going bad, the only thing that you can sell is Bitcoin because it's 24-7, 365. It doesn't shut down. So when people are getting fearful over Japanese, uh, the Japanese yen, the Japanese stock market, they're selling what they can. And what, that's why we saw Bitcoin overly impacted last night is because people were selling what they could and that happened to be Bitcoin because it was the only thing open. But guys, what happened with the yen was you have uh, rates going up. So you have all these leveraged traders that have taken uh, leveraged up in into the yen in this carry trade. And I believe there were a lot of people that got liquidated. Um, and got 
um, had had their loans called in, basically. So, you know, it's it's not good. You go out on leverage on these zero percent things. The rates go up and all of a sudden you're being called in on your loans. And you've got to sell whatever, whatever you've invested in Bitcoin, stocks, whatever. So this is what the other side of or the, the other factor of this major down down price action on Bitcoin is, is, is this carry trade that we're seeing with the yen. Now, guys, I watched, uh, I mentioned P, uh, Raul Paul. Um, he had a, a kind of a video that he put out this morning addressing all the fear in the market. And guys, if you haven't already, go over, follow Raul Paul. Pal. He's on uh, YouTube. I think his his uh, YouTube channel is Raul Pal the Journeyman. So go over, check his latest video out. But I am going to also show you guys a clip that kind of, you know, this whole video that he put out today was really good. Uh, he goes into global um, global monetary uh, supply, uh, M2, and just global liquidity, and just shows how over this market just isn't. So guys, go over and check him out. But I'm going to end uh, with, with this clip from Paul. If you guys like this video, please, please, please like, subscribe. Share this around with with anybody that you might think might help them, might help them hanging in there. Guys, I, I say hang in there, but, you know, another point I wanted to kind of talk about was um, before we get to this clip, I actually have two other things that I want to share really quick. But people think that, you know, they see the charts of Bitcoin and they're like, oh, that's quick, easy money. Let's get into Bitcoin. And it does move quick, but guys, it is not easy. You know, this volatility is not easy. So these are the times when we're, if you're holding, if you're hodling onto your Bitcoin, these are the times when you really earn that diamond hand. Uh, let's see, where's my diamond hand? Yeah, there we go. You, 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 really earn your diamond hand status during this kind of volatility. And these are the times when you're really going to earn those gains that you eventually end up going on to get. But guys, don't don't get shaken out. I, I want to jump back over to uh, the charts. There was one other thing I wanted to show you guys. Um, let's see where are we here okay so on on this uh this chart here you can see that i've i've put in the this purple box guys this is a cme futures gap and what that is let me zoom in here a little bit further this is on the daily guys so this was uh, this was Friday, and and the top of this gap, this top line of, of this purple box, this is where the markets closed on Friday. So markets closed, we went down, down, and down, and now we have this gap between the market close on Friday and the market open on Monday. Now, these gaps have over a 90% chance or history, uh, over a 90% history of closing. And usually we have these on the, the downside. We actually, before we dropped below 60,000 Friday, we had a CME futures to the, the bottom side. We had a, a gap at about 60,000 from this week before. Uh, somewhere 
right in probably I, I don't even know maybe right here but um we did have that one below which closed and we went right through that but now we have this CME futures gap. This is one other thing that you guys can look to because these usually do close in the short to medium term. And this gap only closes once we get to about 62,500. So right now we're at about 54, 55,000. Guys, we, we have a 90, over a 90% chance of jumping back up in the medium to short term back to that 62.5 area and closing that futures gap, guys. So that's just another thing that you can kind of look to, to, to kind of hang in there, you know, have a plan guys, keep and stick to your plan. You know, nothing has changed about Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, so I don't know, guys, just I, I, I try to encourage you guys because as, as much as it hurt, guys, I was up till two o'clock last night watching that bottom come in uh, at 49,000 and it is painful. I'm not going to lie, but getting, getting shaken out at this point, I just don't see that playing out the way um, a lot of people are thinking that it's going to play out. Like people think we've topped this cycle. And I just don't think that's, that's correct guys. Even, even if there's, you know, fear of a recession, I, I really think we're going a lot higher, especially with uh, global liquidity increasing. And that's a lot about what, uh, Raul Pal talks about in his video. But guys, without further ado, I'm going to cut to a clip from Raul. Thank you guys. If you guys like this video, please let me know by hitting that like. Um, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you in the next video. Okay. So you guys are freaked out by the volatility. I've tried to explain with my don't fuck this up thesis that 35% pullbacks are normal and sometimes more. You see, often in crypto markets, we get these, and really there are opportunities to add and not freak out. This is why I urge the longer term time horizon. So I've been in this market of 2013, so I'm gonna show you all the times I've had to deal with volatility like this. So here's a nice one, 2013, I got in around here, it then had a 71% pullback. Now, this is early, early stage. So this is like a smaller token now, probably something smaller than Solana, more like an alt would trade. So in what was looks like a sideways market, it actually did a down 71%. And then it did a 15x um, into the end of the year. So that's kind of how alts act in this. This is when Bitcoin was essentially an alt. It was a small cryptocurrency, not yet with full adoption, not yet proven. Okay, then we go into the 1517 cycle, which I think is a very comparable cycle to now. We talked about 2016 with the spasm. Well, before that, we had a sell-off of 35% in 2015. So that will be something from last year. If we think about those cycles that repeat, the election years are always the uh, macro summer years. So we'd be in 2016 now. So 15 would be last year. Guess what? We had a sell-off last year, and then we had the rally into the end of the year. Okay, very similar. Then we had this 40% pullback around the banana zone, uh, sorry, the boring zone. So this is the boring zone area where um, uh, around the Bitcoin halving. Uh, and that period, you saw a sharp sell-off, pretty nasty, and then eventually it broke high. And then we had another 38% pullback before you really got into full bananas. That's how this works. The banana zone is not about here and today, break out immediately. It's a process by which prices accelerate over time once they're free of the ranges that they're, they're in. That does lie ahead. I know there's a lot of people like, well, oh, Raul, and you're fucking bananas. You're a top signal. Listen, you're not listening. This is not a short-term timing signal. This is the structure of markets I'm trying to talk about, and I'll show you a bit more on that. But that was that cycle. There was some pretty brutal. There was three 35 to 40% pullbacks 
And what a cycle that was. By the end of 2018, this thing had really flown. Okay, so this is the 2017. That was after those corrections. We had four more corrections of 30 to 40%. Four. So what you're, this should be sort of where Solana is now, where the, the size of the corrections, that's the sort of liquidity Bitcoin was, the size in market cap it was then. So this is, we're sim, seeing similar in Solana now. Bitcoin is now much larger market cap, so its volatility is compressed. But this should be looking like Solana, where you start to see the sharp 30 40% pullbacks, and they're just pauses that refresh, and you keep going higher as the banana zone kicked in. So even with four 30 to 40% pullbacks, um, Bitcoin went that year from, I don't know, I'm just eyeballing the chart, 1,200 and ended up at 20,000. Okay, I'm not saying we're going to repeat that, but this is the kind of thing that plays out. So if you're dealing with two short-term time horizon, trying to top and tail it and, uh, um, and time it, I think you'll fuck it up. I simply do. I think you'll miss the move. The best thing to do is to try and scrape the sofa for change and stick it in the markets when you get a sell-off of any magnitude. Because guess what? It compounds really fast and the games come much faster. You'll be at back at all-time PL highs before anybody else. That's why I prefer to add on the dips and not try and trade it around. Because often you get sidelined just when you shouldn't and the market's ripping and you can't get back in.